Hey, this is Andrea Balboni, sex, love, and relationships coach coming to you live from London, the UK. I am here today to talk to you about how to get off the dating roller coaster and set yourself on cruise control. So we are entering deep into the dating season uh, this January now here in London, trying to stay warm. And as we... Um, as I'm hearing from many people dating, it's it's like an up and down kind of thing, and they feel out, really, really out of control with it. And um, it's also kind of been described as spinning plates, so really quite challenging. So I'm here to talk to you today about how you can maintain a sense of calm and control when you are amidst the uncontrollable. And um, hey, Neil, how are you? So, um, yeah, so I remember when I was dating, it was, it did feel a lot like a roller coaster. One minute it was really good, the next minute I didn't know what was going on, and then the next day I remember feeling, feeling when something didn't work out. So I could almost know energetically, I could kind of feel in my body when the person had just left and they were gone and it wasn't interesting anymore. So if you're super sensitive like me, then the roller coaster of dating and that um, and the whole experience of it can feel quite daunting and you can also um, really feel like you're swayed by by the waves of it as it as it ebbs and flows. So I am going to teach you some ways to uh, get off the roller coaster set yourself on cruise control so that you can be pretty stable and steady no matter what happens. And when the beautiful thing about this, about doing this as a woman especially, is that you stay in your own energy, you stay in your own um, power and in your own uh, kind of majesty. And so when a guy sees you s centered and calm and in your power, that's what really attracts him in. That's what really gets him and kind of invites him into your world. Um, so it's a pretty exciting thing to learn. And I'm going to also admit that I was inspired quite um, and, and uh, got quite a lot of uh, these, a couple of these tips from um, a podcast that I listened to by Elizabeth Dialto when she was uh, interviewing Eva Clay, who is a, a sexologist and psychotherapist and also um, had been teaching, um, been teaching neuroscience. So these uh, techniques I'm going to teach you for, for staying calm and uh, in cruise control have to do with staying in your body. So staying really, really uh, centered in your body. And there, by doing this, you can, um, you can really uh, keep kind of a cool head in the beginning, especially when you're getting to know someone and maybe you're feeling your heart really opening to that person and maybe they're even really turning you on, but you're not quite sure if they're going to be good for you yet or not. So you want to sort of stay off the roller coaster and stay pretty calm until you've had a little bit of time to assess the situation, get to know the person a little bit better, and then make a decision from there and perhaps throw yourself in a little bit um, a little bit deeper a little bit more hey Victoria how are you um, so the first uh, the first kind of technique that you can use to stay in your body and therefore kind of stay uh, calm as you're in uh, the throes of dating and even in the very beginning of a relationship is to just um, remind yourself of the confines of your body. And this also comes from uh, trauma therapy, which is really quite interesting. It's just a way of keeping your nervous system calm so that you don't go into fight or flight or, um, or, or freeze even. So the way to do this, the way to really stay in your body is to feel your feet on the ground. So maybe you're chatting with a person and you're starting to feel a little bit like you're being taken away by the magic of the moment, which is great. Um, but maybe just remember to feel your feet on the ground. So that even as you're kind of uh, being captured by the magic, you still are grounded. You still are here, um, here and centered in yourself. And another way to remain kind of centered in your body and yourself is maybe just feel gently the palms of your hands. 
So these are things that you can do without even anyone noticing, especially if your hands are kind of by your side. You could just kind of rub you know, your fingers and you know, the palms of your hands and just remember that this is where you are. You're here in your body, um, even as you're being captivated by this other person. Another, another thing you can do is maybe kind of um, dig your fingernails into your thighs if you're sitting down to just remember, yeah, I'm here. Yep, I got it. Yep, my feet are still on the ground. Yeah, so um, this is really helpful. Another thing you uh, want to do in the, in the very, very early stages is to avoid mirroring. So <laughs> when we, uh, especially as women, want to kind of create this harmony with another person, um, and it's a, human, it's a human thing anyway, so men and women do this both, we'll start to mirror the other person. So if we're walking with them, we'll tend to match their pace, for example. And it can even happen with our breath, with our breathing, and you may not even notice it. But so I would ask you when you're on these first dates with someone uh, or in the, in the throes of what you think may be love, but you're not sure yet, um, is to just uh, be aware that as you're walking along the street with them, that you don't have to quite match their pace. Just notice if you do, notice if you don't. And become aware of your breath and your breathing and how you're breathing. Um, and so we have this, like I was saying, this natural tendency to want to create social cohesion and kind of like this peace and harmony in the, in the situation with someone. However, that can sometimes really throw us off when we get, we get captured and swept away. So um, that would be my second tip. My third tip would be after any date uh, and after seeing someone, and if you're in a relationship or just starting in a relationship, this is also a fantastic thing to do to keep, um, to keep the relationship fresh and alive, is to come back to your center. So having some time alone by yourself on your own to come back into uh, your center and find who you are at your core is really, really something special. It can, for um, a relationship that's starting to go on for a bit of time, it can keep that spark alive because you have just enough distance from that other person where you're your own unique entity and so are they. And that really sparks the desire. And then in the very beginning of dating you have the time to kind of come back to yourself you can even if you do a meditation practice for example call back the parts of yourself that maybe are remembering the date or even starting to fantasize about a future together with a person just call those parts of you back to the present call them back to the moment so if you have a yoga practice this is a great a great time to do this if you have if you practice pilates or if you swim or run just um coming back into your body and bringing your whole self back giving yourself that time um back after the date or after you've seen this person will keep you super steady super centered and again really um by coming back into yourself and remembering yourself, remembering who you are, even if it's just for uh, for those moments of meditation, will, like I say, magnetize another person. Because you in your power, you in your own flavor of energy, of being, of essence, of magic, whatever you want to call it, um, will, will be what draws that person in and will keep you steady if that person isn't quite right and turns out to kind of... Um, to kind of get thrown back into the sea uh, with the rest of the fish. So I wanted to mention a, um, a workshop that I'm hosting with Victoria uh, in a couple of weeks time in London where we practice uh, this um, cultivating, really getting to know ourselves and coming back into ourselves and also really getting to know what makes us super special. So it is a workshop on uh, seduction, so how to seduce without the deception. So it's kind of um, getting to know your own magic, getting to know your own beauty, your own um, mystique as a woman, and uh, really being able to come back to that even as, you, uh, as you're as you dating and 
and as you enter into relationship. So if I were going to give a fourth, um, a fourth kind of tip for staying steady whilst you're dating, it would be to do these kind of things, workshops and anything that will um, help you to get to know yourself more, to explore yourself more. And this is a never ending journey. So I'm continually doing workshops, um, myself attending them and participating in them and now creating them. It's what really, really helped me when I was um, when I was dating and the more I got to know myself and appreciate my own unique flavor of sexiness my own unique flavor um, of beauty that helped me to just really really enjoy dating and start having fun with it and start being and really really be more relaxed with it so I'm just going to um, I'll put the information for the for the workshop on the 2nd of February in London um, in the comments I'd love to see you and I'm sure if Victoria would too. We're going to have an amazing time. We're really excited and are planning a bunch of um, so many different things and different tools for you to take away and use uh, for yourself as you go through the world and date and love. So um, just to remind you of what I shared with you today to help you get off that crazy roller coaster and set yourself on cruise control. And when you are on cruise control and you're calm and um, in yourself, that's when you can really play. That's when things get really fun because you are not worrying about what's happening with things externally. You're totally at peace and calm within yourself and it gives you space to play. So the first thing was staying in your body. So when you're on those dates, um, you're just uh, feeling the ground beneath your feet or feeling the palms of your hands or maybe pinching yourself or um, digging your nails in gently uh, to just bring yourself back if you feel yourself being carried away by someone and you can be, um, enthralled by them and also grounded and present at the same time. This is the beauty of it. The second is to uh, avoid mirroring. So um, until you kind of are sure that this is a person that you want to be with to help you remain focused and um, not feel too much cohesion with them, you may want to mismatch your step when you walk or be able to become aware of your breathing. So you can uh, use discernment until you're sure you want to go deeper with them, even in this very simple way. The third thing is to come back to your center. So after going on a date, um, do a bit of meditation or yoga practice, Pilates or swim, something that's going to bring you back wholly into you. Call back all the parts of yourself that you left on the date as you remember it. Call back all the parts of yourself that are jumping into the future as you imagine a life with this person. Uh, we know we do. Um, call them all back to the present moment when you're doing this um, recentering kind of practice and you'll feel whole again, you'll feel good again, you'll feel steady. Um, and the last thing was come to our workshop on the 2nd of February in London um, or find uh, other workshops or other places where you can go and be with other people who are also learning more and more about themselves so that you can fully enter into your power, fully enter into what makes you unique and good and whole and, um, and really shine in this world. So that's what I have for you today. Hey, Joe. And hi, Julia. Nice to see you both. And um, yeah, that's it for me today. Have a wonderful uh, rest of the evening. And if you're watching this in the catch up, whatever time of day it is or night, I hope it's a good, it's a good beginning, middle or end. Bye until next time. Bye.